Hello, it's Joe. It's June 21st, I guess, um, a Wednesday. And I've been working on roughing in the wiring. I've got to a point where I can actually put the wiring in. And I did it in just a couple of hours for this room here. Um, but I thought I'd tell you about it. I did, this, this one, this video will be titled Making a Home Run on Gordon Hill Road because uh, I had forgotten this little use of electrical planning terms, but there's something called having a home run, and that's what I just did this morning. Uh, and you'll see why for a minute here. Now what's happening with this is, we're actually gonna have eight outlets in this room where there previously was none, and we're gonna have six or eight outlets in the secret room where there previously was none, and the same with over there. So I've got a couple more days or a couple more mornings of putzing around here. But instead of running all of them back to the panel in the floor, uh, in the cellar, we're going to have a sub-panel. And the sub-panel is going to be in this corner. So we start with this. The sub-panel is home plate. I left enough wire so that we'll be able to hook to the sub-panel. I don't think we've decided if the sub panel is going to be on this side or that side, probably that side of this little partition here. But um, this took some thinking because I didn't want to have any wire exposed to one of the entrances to the secret room, one of the hobbit doors. So I ended up drilling a hole in a couple of the rafters. To pass the wire through this is the corner by the way where the old wire comes and as near as i can figure out the old wire loops on the above the front door somehow loops all the way across the ceiling comes to this where it distributes power below it and among other things ultimately it gets the power to the sump pump which is in the same cellar as the main thing. But what the heck, they just spliced another spot on there and some pump's ready to go. Um, the sump pump needs to actually probably be on its own circuit and we'll get there. Anyway, so that corner there is first base. Started at home plate. Have to run to the right down here. Uh, got another I'm trying to minimize the spots where the wire goes through one of the eight by eight beams But I had to still do it and I confess I lost another drill bit right in this spot It got stuck in there and I was damned if I could get it out So I had to leave it unhook it from the drill and Then leave it there Oh, well ten bucks donated to a worthy cause now what's happened here is <laughs> you don't have to run one piece of wire all the way around the room or the building in a continuous thing here because every time it hits a wall outlet it has to be cut to splice in the wall outlet. So here's the first one and you got two of the wires hanging out so it really only I had to this actually probably took 15 feet of wire here so then we go up through here and the other piece is it's going between two sets of boards here so I had to this was relatively quick to string um, and that made it easier once we got here now one of my pride and joys has been I've been doing pretty good at making uh, corner holes. I have a special drill bit with a sort of a curvy angle in it. It's hard to get them to get, it's hard to find them in the store that way. Yuck, yuck, yuck. But I got it in one side and down the other. And I think on the blog, I'll put a picture of the little fish I made to fish the wire through because I didn't invent the fish. But then I remembered that I had read about it and done it before. And voila, it was in the same book on electricity that I used 
30 years ago. So it was like, oh yeah, I gotta make that. So this is the second corner. Then we got going through here, another one now. This one kind of has a cutout in this facing board, partly because you don't want to just put the outlet on a thin board. You have to nail the outlet to something substantial and you have to put a brad or whatever within eight inches of the outlet to secure the whole thing so it won't become loose. <coughs> then ran this behind the chimney that was not easy, um, but I got it there, and so that's on the other side, and peekaboo, it comes in through here, goes to another one. Now there's like three wall outlets in close proximity here, uh, partly because when this room is finished, I, I envision this part being a corner in which there is a desk. And nowadays people need a lot more um, outlets for their desk when they have, or at least I know I do. Uh, we're a lot more plugged in than we used to be. Then we've got another corner. And uh, this was the one I said that was my first one. So I think I've got a total of seven corners and I got two of them. Then we have this one. Another one where I had to kind of build it up there. The outlet sticks out a little bit because ultimately there will be sheetrock against it. When we put the sheetrock there, then the outlet ought to be flush. If I measure it, okay. Then here's the last outlet on this. That was, that was second base, by the way. Now over to third base, what we've got is um, another outlet. Um, not a good idea to put the outlet over the heating duct, except guess what? That heating duct is not hooked up, nor will it ever be. And, uh, so don't be alarmed. Uh, I just, I still have that there to cover the hole so I don't accidentally step in it or drop a tool down it. Then, so now we're at third base. This is where the closet used to be. And this is the third corner here. And what happens here is I want to have it all, I want to have this end sort of curl back because we've got the partition that separates the stairwell from this room. And there will still be some outlets there. I'm not really concerned about getting the outlets in this partition fully wired up yet. These are interior, this is an interior partition. Those are interior outlets. We'll have one go there and another one just roughly go there. I put a nail in it to remind myself, yeah, we're going to have one there. But that doesn't mean that it'll be at that height. Uh, and so anyway, for this one, what I decided I would do is I wanted to go around the door to what used to be a closet, which will probably be a closet again. And I looped it up top and then came back down again. And it actually parallels the conduit that comes up from the cellar in this corner. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it kind of loops up around the vicinity of where the conduit goes. Let me see if I turn on my flashlight. Do I have that with me still? Yes. Um, so that I, it goes through the rafter there, whereas the conduit comes up from down below. And we've had an interesting time trying to figure out where the conduit all goes. And at some point, when a person I know who is an electrical wizard comes over and we actually identify where the power comes from and turn it off, I actually have extra heavy duty extension cords. But so anyway, we started with home base, 
first base, second base, deep left field, and third base, and then sliding back to home. And that's just, in the electrical trade, you know, they use sports analogies, uh, and that would be one. But it's getting kind of warm up here, and I'm going to go do something downstairs next. So catch you later. Bye.